I'm waiting for it to call. Call now. Our call is now being recorded. Okay. Do I have... Let me go to the chat. Um, let's talk about this. I see some stuff in chat that says um, they are all rhombuses. Um, I'm going to say they are not rhombuses. Okay. A rhombus, something is a rhombus if all sides are congruent, which means all sides are the same length. None of those are rhombuses. Does anybody else have anything? So we got looking here. It says A and C are reflections. Okay. So these two are reflections, so I could call them congru congruent. And I will bet you, if you take this A and you rotate it into that quadrant, A, B, and C are congruent. So good, you got A and C there being reflections. A, B, and C are all congruent. How are all four of them kind of the same? What would you call, what would you say about the D that's not showing up here? What would you say about D? What is it compared to the other ones? Anybody feel free to type in chat. How is D? They are the same shape. Good, good one there. So same shape in math. We use the word similar. Okay. Similar has the mathematical symbol. I'm going to stop using the pen because it's clicking a lot. It has the mathematical symbol. That's the tilde key. Okay. D looks closer. It's larger. Yes. Um, so D is similar. It's the same shape, but it is a different size. Things that are the same shape and different sizes are called dilations. Okay. Next week, I believe next week, we are going to be doing dilations. It's either next week or the week after that. And there are going to be two types of dilations that we do. One is called an enlargement. And the second one is called a reduction. So two types of dilations we can do. One is called an enlargement. The other one is called a reduction. Okay, that's really good. I saw people were trying to use um, the terminology that um, I used in class the other day. These are not rhombuses. Okay, they are one of our special geometric shapes. I will tell you that this side and this side, this side and that side, these two sides, and these two sides are parallel to each other. And in class last week, in one of our warm-up things, I said that quadrilaterals, which are our four-sided figures that have exactly one set of opposite side parallel, are called trapezoids. So all four of these drawings are trapezoids. Bingo. So the next one, I have a blank slide. Does anybody have any specific questions on the homework? Those that told me they're gonna show me the homework, we're gonna show it after I stop recording. Are there any specific questions on the homework? If so, please type them in chat and I could possibly work through them.
When we start getting to more and more where we're actually going to be doing arithmetic and algebra, these questions that we do before I teach the next lesson are what are called burning questions. And that'll be a routine. I will do at least one of each type of the homework questions um, at the beginning of class to make sure people are okay with all of the questions. So today's a big day. Today we're going to stop doing a single transformation and we're going to start either drawing or describing sequences of transformations. Okay, this picture is so all the stuff that I'm doing on the board right now, if you want to follow along, is in your iReady book. And I will tell you what page it's on right now. Uh, da, da, da. If I can find it. I just cut and pasted it. There we go. I am starting on, problem is I don't have your book. I am on page 56 of your iReady book. Thank you, Will, uh, there. What we want to do is, this is like the tet Tetris game, one of my favorite games of all time. I used to be able to play it blindfolded. Somebody would tell me which shape was there, and I knew where shapes would pop in, and I would be able to visualize what the bottom looked like and be able to play it blindfolded. We used to have blindfolded championships. So what I need to do is I need to get this piece that's at the top, and I need to get it down there so I can clear all three rows out, okay? If I just move it straight down, it's not gonna fit, okay? If I move it straight down, it's going to fit in those squares. And I wouldn't even fill up a row, okay? So what I want to do is I want to do a sequence of transformations to get this thing to fit, okay? Can somebody tell me a sequence of transformations that will get piece J to fit into J double prime? Okay, a rotation. There's one. Uh, which way do you want to rotate there? Clockwise or counterclockwise and how many degrees? Gonna go clockwise by 90, okay? I can go clockwise by 90 or counterclockwise by 270. If I go clockwise by 90, what I'm going to end up with is one, two, three, one, two, one. Okay, so what I end up with is what I have drawn in red now. So that is a 90, degree clockwise rotation. And then what do I want to do? What do I want to do with what's my now red figure? Anybody? Going to go down, yes. So I am going to go down one. Let me get a pin that's the right size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we did a 90 degree clockwise rotation. Then we are going to translate down. And I wrote down the number seven units. So one of your, your, 
you have multiple homework assignments tonight, and we're going to get to those at the end of the class. One of the assignments is just describing this sequence of trans transformations to get me from one, one spot to another spot. There are multiple ways that I could have done this. I could have moved it down three, rotated it counterclockwise 270, and then moved it down four more. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you give me the quickest way to do them. It's, um, you want to be able to think about um, all the possibilities there. So I'm gonna go to the next picture. Figure W is congruent to figure Q. Um, describe a sequence of transformation that shows this and show your work. Okay, I want, and that should not be that. I want to say figure P. We got a big, huge old honking spelling error in there. Figure P is congruent to figure Q. Describe a sequence of transformation that shows this. Show your work. I don't care whether you go from Q to P or P to Q. Can somebody give me uh, a step to get from one to the other? Anybody? It's, two, it's a two-step process. Do you guys want a hint? Rotate Q 90 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna assume that you want to, rotate. which way do you wanna rotate it? Clockwise, okay, clockwise, thank you. I wanna rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So if I rotate this one 90 degrees clockwise, this line now becomes my Y axis. So I'm gonna go up four, ooh, don't wanna to touch that there. I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, I'm gonna go up to five. Okay, because that's four units long. And my thing is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It goes up one. And this piece is one. One, two, three, four. I went too high up here, so let me erase a little bit of that. And then I can go and this. So I have just rotated it to here. And I'm going to call this W, which is Q prime. That I want to reflect it across the x-axis. Awesome. You guys are got it. Then I reflect it across the x-axis, and I get there. So it does take some thinking, okay? When I was a little kid in school, and if I would have had this at whatever grade it was, what I would have done is I probably would have cut out a piece of paper that was the exact same shape as Q, and I would have just started sliding it around the page, spinning it around in circles, flipping it over, and kind of figuring out what I, how I'd be able to get there. Okay? So these may take some thinking for you. This next one. Figure A and B are congruent rectangles. Which sequences of transformations show this? Select all that apply, and I am on page 58, and it's problem number eight in your workbook. So what I'd like you guys to do is spend a minute or two going through A, B, C, D, and E, seeing which ones work, filling it out in your workbook, and then I will walk through this problem. Okay, he did show up. And I'm, while you guys are working on that, I am going to mark in some more people.
And I do have a couple people that said they have to leave early. Go ahead and leave when you have to leave and this video will be posted. This is page 58, 58, bottom of page 58. Oh, welcome, Benita. Uh, I didn't see it when you popped in. I need to go to classroom. Okay, about another 30 seconds, and I will be there to work through that with you. Okay, so A, rotate the figure 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin and then move it up one unit. So if I rotate A 90 degrees counterclockwise, I'm going to be going this way. And my new A would look something like this, okay? Um, and then if I move it up one unit, it's going to not look anything like B. So I'm gonna say A is a non-starter. The next one we have is translate A four units right and then one unit up. So if I translate A four units right, I now have what I have in light green. And then if I move it up one unit, it matches up B. So B does work. I um, am going to erase the, my markings up here so I can do the next one. The next one I wanna do is translate A up one and then reflect it across the X axis. So if I move A up one, it is now this green rectangle. And then I reflect it across the, um, it says across the X axis. I reflect it across the X axis. It's now gonna go back right where it started from. Okay, so it's not this one. Rotate figure A 180 degrees about the origin. If I rotate it 180 degrees about the origin, this point stays the same, and then this point is gonna rotate up to here, and yes, that one does work. And E, reflect A across the Y axis, which is gonna give me the this light, oops. Sorry about that. It's gonna give me this um, icky olive color. That's across the Y axis. And then if I move it up one unit, I do take that one and put it in B. Okay, so there are multiple ways that I could have got there. And C would have worked if I would have changed this X axis to a Y axis. So again, not a lot of arithmetic or algebra in this. This is just basically thinking, can you visualize it? And last one, this is our little exit before we do our, um, this is our exit ticket is not in your workbook. 
It says figure H is congruent to H double prime. I want you to tell me two different ways that I can get from H, the blue one, to H double prime, the purple one, and each one of those ways needs to have more than one step. So I need two different sequences. So what I'd like you guys to do is um, think about it. And if you come up to the chat, Again, this one is not shown in your um, workbook. And while we're doing that, we can bombard your email. And a little bonus. So this is a question I would maybe put on a test. I can um, say, what is a single transformation that will make it work? And then I can ask you to give me a sequence of transformations that will make it work. Because I can see a single one that'll work, and I see at least two double ones that'll work. My single one, which was not part of the question, is just to reflect it across x equals 2. Yeah. Does anybody have a sequence that will work? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to continue writing on here, but so we can have a verbal dialogue about this and maybe some thinking. I'm going to stop the recording, but when I post the um, pictures, we'll actually have this stuff after the recording stops. The only other slide on here is our homework, so let me stop the recording really quick. <laughs>